know you're not a fan of uh, <laughs> Towers of Doom, as we discussed yesterday for potential, for potential reasons. Where would you like to see them go? I'd like to see Czech Republic probably go to Voskaya. So okay. Poland, as we know, they're fantastic Hero League players, but as we hinted, some of them might not have the time to put into Hero League because they are on Open Division teams, or in Mana's case, he's a full-time StarCraft player. So maybe go to Volskaya. It's a map that's only been available in Hero League. And that could be something they could throw Poland off with and definitely get an advantage from that. Well, well let's find out. Uh, sorry, let's sorry. really find out what the map is going to be, and then I will jump straight back to you for that fort. It looks like, as you can see here, it was Poland who picked the Tomb of the Spider Queen. And the next map is going to be... Uh -oh. Those are the previous maps. Next map is going to be Infernal Shrine. So we're going okay. to a standard map with also a lot of teamfight potential. What do you think of that? Yeah, and I think uh, this could be a similar scenario like on Tomb of the Spider Queen. We have shrines, we have choke points nearby. There's a lot of heroes who can zone out, but the Czech Republic must be prepared for this one. They must expect something else or, or something similar coming in from the Polish team. It, potentially, especially the Probius. Once again, it's so good at dominating those narrow choke points. Yeah, absolutely. So Inferno Shrines, it's it's a solid choice, I think, because there are a lot of diverse strategies and there are multiple yeah. ways to play the map. So Czech Republic, they still have some room to work with. Definitely a better map for them than Tomb of the Spider Queen, I can say that much. <laughs> yeah. um, but at the same time, Poland it is also a standard map. There are ways that you can play to minimize cheese. There are ways that you can play that give you a very solid base to work from, and that's what I want to see Poland do. All right, well, let's check out the picks and bans here. Let's see which way these teams want to go with this. Like I said, there is lots of strategy, uh, strategic options here for both teams as Poland takes the first ban here. Yeah, what I want to see from the Czech Republic here is uh, picking a draft or picking a composition that features at least one or two of those Lucky Punch Haymaker heroes, like a Zero Tool, for example. If you're having a really good day, or if the enemy team gets a little bit too cocky, too overzealous, then you can really make those plays with a well-placed VP, throw in a Diablo, Apocalypse yeah. combo. Diablo not really being bad on this battleground in general. That's what I want to see here. And speaking of things you guys want to see, if you want to see your team win, if you are from Poland or the Czech Republic, or you just like what you <laughs> saw in that last game, be sure to vote for which one you want to see win using that code. Hashtag PLWIN for Poland and hashtag CZWIN for the Czech Republic. Right now, you guys are beginning to lean a little bit more back towards Poland. 61% to 39%. Uh, probably understandable after that first game. Very, very <laughs> convincing uh, from Poland. Yeah, it yeah, wouldn't surprise me to climb or to see that climb yeah. even more. Well, remember, guys, to keep voting and we shall see if our two analysts there are <laughs> correct and if those points will keep going up for Poland. For now, though, Poland not wanting to play against the Genji and Czech Republic removing Tassadar. So Poland yours. making a bold choice. They're going to commit to the team fight style on Shrine. Or are they? So Sonya does very well at that, but there is a certain cheese that you can do with Sonya where you aim to basically backdoor keeps. It's something that was very much popularized in the EU region by Team Dignitas, but also Fnatic of the Shrine Spawns in top lane. We don't care, we're going to the bot lane, and Sonya's <laughs> straight on the keep and taking it down almost instantly. So, very solid opening for Poland. Yeah, I also got to say that the response to that, Sonia, though, by the Czech Republic is pretty decent. We have a Dehaka who could always lane against potential backdooring heroes. Uh, we have an ETC who brings additional crowd control to the table to interrupt the Sonia from spinning. And it's one of those playmaking heroes. A good mosh yeah. can turn it around. There's also the option for the double global if they want Very to true. try and react to any kind of split push Sonia pressure that they could see. So maybe trying to force Poland into that more team fighter yeah. style. Poland, though, embracing this with open arms with the Rhaegar and the Greymane. Rhaegar and the Greymane, the double dogos. And uh, what's so cool about Rhaegar in general, which makes him one of the top tier, if not the top tier support right now, is of course the AoE damage he brings to the table. And that's so good in the Shrine phase, but also when it comes to taking mercenaries to distract the enemy team and force their attention while the Shrine is open. Absolutely. So I, I keep talking about it. I feel like I need to get <laughs> more talking points, but talking about the PVE that Rhaegar and Greymane bring. They are very high priority picks this tournament. And as I was mentioning earlier, with that, Let's skip the shrine. That's something that uh, Poland can absolutely do because Sonya 100% has that 1v1 on lockdown against a hacker, can even take the shrine in potentially a 2v1. So what would be things for Poland to worry about with their next ban who have Abbott the band? Potentially maybe a Brightwing, remove more global potential to make it so it's less likely anyone's going to help to hacker against Sonya? I would definitely like to see the Brightwing, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think the hacker is 
good against this composition because it has that global pressure. If it's the hacker and the bright wing, then you can have a 5v5 or 5v4 sorry, in that bot lane with the double global. Or you can have a 3v2 against the Sonya. So a lot of pressure would come out from a bright wing pick. What do you guys think of Malthail here, who could also be a nice counter to the regular Ancestor healing? We saw that yesterday. If you go Touch of Death at level 7, he's good in a lane against Sonya. He's nice in those shrine situations. Do you think it could be a possibility for the Czech Republic, or, or would they be too melee heavy then? It is definitely risky, but committing to those melee heroes who do not have push themselves can put you at a huge disadvantage in the macro game. And that's something that, when looking at Poland, when looking at these open division players from Polska Piamenta, who did come second and did compete in the Crucible, that's something you have to be scared of. There is something we should also mention very quickly here, guys. Uh, we saw Uther as the ban, by the way, so not the Brightwing, so it <laughs> could still be picked. But something we should mention is the current patch we are playing on. Junkrat is allowed, Alex oh, Strasser yeah. is not. So there is a small chance we could see, it for the first time, I suppose, in a professional environment, the Junkrat coming into play. Junkrat is a tricky one, though. There is a lot of debate yeah. going on bet uh, between players who think he's absolutely godlike and players who say, it's not really that good. <laughs> I'm not sure which party I belong to up to this point. Yeah, I just wait for evidence, which we could We see. need evidence. We definitely need more <laughs> professional evidence, that's for sure. I think Junkrat is a hero that's very similar in his role to Greymane, but just doesn't bring the versatility and the team fighting potential that Greymane does. Instead, he brings some really wacky utility, such as the <laughs> huge displacements or indeed the zoning of the mines. So we see Valor and Malfurion coming in here, potentially opened up for another damage dealer or a second support. So very flexible uh, final pick spot there for the Czech Republic. So Bakery was talking a lot about the early game pressure that the Polish team can build up with uh, that draft they've got here. A hero that is really nice to support that in a way is Zarya. Uh, I think she would fit in here quite nicely. You can really absorb a lot of those tower shots early. You can empower yourself and you can go for those crazy pushes while the enemy team may be, for example, busy clearing a shrine. Absolutely. I don't think I'd like to see them commit to Zarya. I'd much so rather than pick um, a main tank and there we go, gotcha. a major, a Vayne's Assassin. Oh, no. So a new back, um, again, very good at these backdooring, split pushing. Uh, the Beatles can tank the towers. You can tank the towers with shields. Definitely. Uh, a good pick for that. So I haven't really seen a lot of a new break at all in this tournament no. thus far. No, I think that might be the first pick. Yeah, even against Shogal yesterday, I was wondering, uh, no cocoon against Shogal did catch them quite off guard, yeah. to be fair. But yes, I believe you are correct that this is the first Anubarak we are seeing today. And combining it with Li Ming, one of the biggest counters to the Anubarak in the form of that disintegrate. Just don't have to worry about that. Through that cocoon, they don't have to worry about it. Like you said, instead, they can use the cocoon as setup for Li Ming's combo. I'd definitely like to see a second support coming out from the Czech Republic. I think Valor's very vulnerable to the Grey Main to the Anub, even to the Li Ming right now. So I'd like to see um, potentially potentially a Karazim, yeah. um, potentially a Brightwing, as we Still said. Available. We think Brightwing is one of the few picks that can provide a lot of pressure onto uh, Poland's comp here. What about Stukov? That as well. So Stukov has been rising in popularity this yeah. tournament. I do think this is a fine situation for him. And so. we see Taranda. It, it's a second support. support. <laughs> it can it's, heal. That is effectively a very scary CC combo, but it's against the Vega and it's against the Sonya, it's against the Anub. So it's not the ideal situation for it, but Czech Republic have tools this game. Last game, they were very limited in what they could do and Poland took perfect advantage of it out once we move past that early game. This time, they themselves have the kill pressure. They have the wave clear from Malfurion. They have the huge chain lockdown, which is you hit one stun, you follow it up with a tongue, you follow that up with a root, and you follow that up with a stun from Tarande. They were marked the whole time. There's a lot of damage on the Czech Republic side. Yeah, the Czech draft reminds me a little bit of a Korean draft sometimes because they like to run the ETC Tarande uh, a lot themselves as well. But Korea is known for crisp execution and top-notch timing. So yeah. I'm not sure if the Czech Republic has the means to really execute it as flawlessly as the Koreans. Well, you're talking about execution. How should the Czech Republic execute this draft to try and gain uh, try and gain a victory here? They need to go for gangs. As easy as it sounds, but they need to get this early game pressure to really prevent another snowball in the early game from 
Polish team. I'd like to see some sneaky shenanigans. I'd yeah. like them to be backdooring. I'd like, like them to be flanking all the way around, turning up behind Poland at every possible opportunity. And I think that's how they catch them off guard. I think that's how they get the picks that allow them to get foothold in this series. Sneaky shenanigans <laughs> is the term from Bakery. I'd be interested to see how that has affected the votes. If any, that has the Toronto has maybe won some people over. We were literally looking at the Toronto from yourself earlier today in a YouTube video that we found. As, so we do know it can have that insane impact to allow you to turn around those fights. Yeah, and what Tarando also brings to the table, which cannot be underestimated, is vision. So you can really find targets that may be isolated, that may be separated from their teammates a little bit better. Um, you can also tell where those Sonya shenanigans or the split pushing shenanigans may come from. So the Sentinel here could be quite crucial. In final words, who are you rooting for? I'm going to have to go Poland again. That was such a convincing game one, I cannot be swayed, even by the Tarande pick. I've got some friends in the Czech Republic, and as much as I would like to support them, I just can't do it. Poland it is. Two votes for Poland, and I unfortunately cannot stray away <laughs> from their expertise here as we head into game number two. And Kendrick, who's the team on the left? It is the Polish team, one of the clear favorites of this tournament. And if you saw game number one in this best of three, you know why they're considered to be exactly that. And on the right-hand side, looking for a potential comeback, it is going to be the Czech Republic. Starting off with some owls and starting off with some hungering arrows. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it really makes me happy to see the Polish team look so good because Poland has always been one of those traditional European esports bastions. And uh, yes. there's a lot, of, a, a lot of national pride going on. The Polish fans are very emotional, very excited when it yeah. comes to cheering for their favorite players. Um, and I'm really excited to see how far this momentum potentially can carry this all-star team. As am I. Like, like you said, Poland has been around since the very beginning. Oh, there yeah, were like for sure. Some of the alpha teams, like, I think I mentioned G2 Esports earlier yep. from back in the day. Yeah. Back in, like, what was that? 2015? 2014? Early 2016, yeah. Yeah, way back in, way back in alpha almost. Good borrow by, our, by respect, but it's not enough. Or is it? Oh. oh, yeah, it's not enough. Zadoon, for starters, Really nice mind games. Dived in, <laughs> looked like he was going to cast it. Respect borrowed to dodge it, which yeah. was really good, but Sadoon was holding it back. Uh, Respect, though, nice moves, was still able to escape. He almost got the cheeky tongue in that we saw <laughs> yesterday on those uh, the Haka players. It was against Genji, I can't remember which player it was. It was exactly. two heroes in a row. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of uh, drags were used that day, and they almost always found their targets here. Azumex needs to wait a little bit longer, though. He's definitely rocking the right skin, though. That D Haka oh, yes. is definitely my favorite. D Haka, I love that name. <laughs> as we do see other talents worth talking about. Warpaint, as we've seen almost every single yep. game from the Sonya here, giving her that extra solo lane potential and helps her a little bit with mercenaries a little bit later on. Oh, for sure. Uh, you always want to take a look at your opposing laner when you play Sonya, and then you decide what to go for. If you face a heavy, a hard-hitting uh, opponent, like let's say Leoric, then oftentimes block is the way to go, especially yep. against uh, those hard-hitting maces. But uh, in a matchup where it's a lot of training, a lot of you know back and forth, and a lot of uh, 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 where there's a lot of focus on sustain, then yep. you go for warping 100%. So right now we are seeing that moon burn already up to 30 stacks, so that's already very nice to buy Malfurion. And Taranda already on two stacks, so she, she's going to get up there. But the thing is, they need to survive long enough to start getting value out of those yeah. owls, as we do hit level four for both teams pretty close to the same time. Yeah, and we see Under King coming in for a new barrack. Uh Sometimes you still see better barbs, uh, especially if you need to close in corridors and if you need reliable CC to really proc with other talents, for example, yeah. Nara's uh, unfair advantage, but in most cases, Under King is the way to go because you really want to have that range, the cooldown reduction oh. later on. So good, and the tongue connects the follow-up stun as well, and first blood goes over to the Czech Republic team, but they pay dearly for it. Whoa, okay. Okay. that <laughs> went downhill really fast. Uh -oh. As we do see Thray uh -oh. with a three-man stun trying to get his ally out. Rosemex gets finished off. Thray, the only survivor yeah. for his team. And like you said, Really nice kill with everyone comboing, but the second that At happened, cost? we saw the backline just get dived by the remaining heroes. Exactly. I mean, it's nice to start off a team fight with a kill. However, if you expose yourself while trying to go for that kill and you take the retaliation blow, it's probably not worth it. And Mana on that Li Ming, when he gets those resets rolling, he's going to punish the Czech Republic team mercilessly. 
So we do see that vulnerable, that Hunter's Mark being immediately dropped onto the Punisher, which does allow him to clear that up a little bit quicker. Taranta, very useful for that kind of scenario. Yeah, and this is what we talked about during the draft here. Rengar is so good when it comes to clearing mercenary yeah. camps, but guess what? His wolf brother, Grayman, is just as good. And uh, you can really see double uh, double mercenary pressure, yeah. just like that, in a couple of seconds. Anubarak can actually solo camp, so I'm pretty sure the only person on this team who can't Sonya solo could. camp is Lee Ming. Yeah, exactly. Which I guess she could, given enough time and enough mm. health being lost, but yeah, she could... <laughs> everyone on that team can do mercs at some point. And that also messes with your macro play, because sometimes when you play maps like First Hollow, for example, and there's only one dedicated mercenary clearer, then yep. you can tell, okay, this person, we can't see by the minimap, we can't see that person yep. anywhere, They're he's doing mercs. There. Let's go with raid. it. Raid, exactly. Yeah. And when you're against this kind of team, it's could be anyone. anyone is gone. They could be ganking us. They could be stealing a exactly. burglary. What do we do about that? And the answer is very little. There's very few reactions that could be appropriate. And last game, Tetra, we uh, wanted, or we put a lot of focus on Gugus, who's now playing Raymond. But this time around, I really want you guys to follow Wolfsey on that Sonya. I think he's easily one of the best solo laners, one of the best off tanks in Europe. Um, whenever you have him in your Hero League team, you know you can bank on that guy to not fall, to not feed, to always be there when his team needs him. So Wolfsey, a uh, super solid, reliable player. Yeah, he is. He's been around for a long time, and he has been consistently oh yeah, that's, that's sure. impressive throughout his entire career. Duranda at level 7, bringing out the Darnashian Archery. Potentially one of the talents that can be the most hilarious in the late game. It really can be. In the meantime, though, we see Wolf Z fall. Uh, and uh, thanks for making me look like a goof on stream, Wolf. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at it. Keep an eye on this guy. He's really good. Him. He's never going to feed or anything, you know. Yeah, keep an eye on You guys, just watch this guy. He's going to do something great. Oh, he died. <laughs> but sometimes you can just... Blame it on tactical feeding and be like, hey, I watch you guys so much space, get something done elsewhere. And it looks like uh, the Polish yeah. team was doing exactly that. Full three a little bit of pressure in the bottom, a little bit of soaking in the middle. So uh, they're very close to level 10 now, Tetra. They are, and there it is. Heroics available here. It's going to be the wave of force. Go for the throat, uh, ancestral healing, the cocoon, and leap from Zonya. They wanted that extra engage potential and that extra blow-up potential against a comp with no cleanse. Yeah, that is exactly the crucial point here. There's no cleanse available. Now you put Malfrian into the cocoon and there's not going to be any disengage available and then Li Ming, Sonya, Greyman, they all bam, 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 jump, pounce on the same target and take an innocent life. Now we see, we, even though they gained a little bit of a head start, the Czech Republic have been completely forced off this objective. And now, Poland, though, they don't have to stay there. They don't have to be here at all. They can just leave Sonya yeah. up in the top lane to do the objective while they look for advantages elsewhere. In this case, they were looking for a kill onto Thray, but ETZ, a little bit too tanky. We see that Back attempted in. punishment. Gugus takes the damage. It's not enough to finish, and the Beetle prevented an extra shot. Now, can the Czech team reach level 10 before that uh, Punisher knocks at their bottom right. It's going to be very important. Nice dismount here on Zadoon. Uh, buys them a couple more seconds. And ETC, though, for right, needs to be very careful how he yeah. approaches how he approaches that fight. This fort is gone. No, it's Zoning potential yeah. is way too good from Poland, coming at down from that from that southern area, able to force everyone from the Czech Republic back. This does mean they'll have their level 10s, but that fort is complete. There was no way they could defend yeah. that. I like what Taka's doing in the bottom lane, you know, squeezing in that tiny little additional amount of experience. Yeah. Not a huge um, amount of good place yep. to tunnel to, though. Uh oh. Oh, the leap on the Ronda, the mosh pit, and Just the attempt to turn around. They're trying to get it. They get a pick up a counter kill here. Cool. And guess what? They can't kill three because he was in the cocoon. Yeah, that was really cool. A, a really nice move, but uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Bad. Kenny. Really bad. Kenny goes down. <sighs> You're not supposed to follow your role model from a famous TV show too, too much, man. You can't, you can't <laughs> die all the time. <laughs> no, but I, I want to highlight the clean and crisp execution there by Poland, and that's why you can see, guys, hold on, the team fight is not over just yeah. yet. Czech team is on the hunt now. Double can out. turn around? Double hour revenge attempt, but yeah. Thray was too far away. They can't keep up. Rhaegar's too fast. Guga's able to use, literally disengage as, it, as its own namesake this time yeah. to put some distance between himself and the enemy team. Yeah, it really shows the importance of who tanks the Immortal. 
or uh, the Punisher, excuse me, over the wall. If it's one of the squishies, like Taran and Malfurion, it's just an invitation to the enemy team to say like, hey, you know what, just jump on me. I, I mean, I just took the, the John Cena slant. Why don't you follow it up with everything you've got? And I'm probably dead. Especially while Malfurion doesn't have Ice Block. Once he gets that, you can maybe bait people into making a, a play that they regret later. But as it is for now, you really need to have the Haka or ETC tank it and no one else. So, level... The level 10s, we, uh, they have been here for a while for the Czech Republic. They've gone for the double side. It's very CC heavy. Uh, and of course, to run, they're going with the more usual these yeah. days, Shadow Stalk. Yeah, I mean, Starfall can sometimes be used as, oh, no, 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 okay. Kenny, almost, here it's almost, <laughs> almost walked into the wrong neighborhood here, yeah. Uh, Starfall is sometimes good if you have a lot of Wombosh Mombo, if you have a lot of zoning potential, like the Slowing Sands, for example. Yeah. But if you don't have anything quite like it, then uh, Shadow Stalk is the way to go, especially when there's a lot of lower potential. Let's say Tyrannic gets focused by Lee Ming and Grey Min. She can pop Shadow Stalk and deny the yeah. killing blow. And the extra attack speed, of course, True. she comes out of that and just makes her insane combo that with the Darnashian art and she is going to have a brilliant time. Yeah, brilliant times indeed. Now, speaking of brilliant times oh. and combo combos and AoE devastation, that's exactly what the Czech team needs. They are not too far behind. I mean, one and a half levels, that looks a little bit yeah, rough at first talent. glance. One talent is exactly, but uh, they're going to be there soon. They just need to survive and buy a little bit more time. Holy cow, three. That was really close. It was nice, though. But yeah. three abilities out, burn a little bit of mana, burn some cooldowns. Unfortunately, they're not capitalizing on this. Val is doing mercenaries up in the top lane, to ke uh, killing off this Fallen Shaman with uh, just under half stacked Hungry Garrow builds. Exactly. Kenny now helping out the Vala, trying to tank a little bit of the damage from the Fallen Shaman. And those mercenary camps are probably one of the most fearsome in the game because they can single-handedly take down fords and sometimes even keeps if yeah. you don't pay attention to it because the Shaman is always going to spawn new doggies to tank towers and fords and keeps alike. Level 13 finally available for the Czech Republic. This is going to make their defense a little bit easier, yeah. especially as it looks like Poland are going to be pushing in with this. So any talent they have available to them is so important. Exactly. Tarana, by the way, 15 stacks on her owls, whereas we just saw Tahaka finish his movement speed talent. Yeah, this one unfortunately not hitting anyone. The Sentinel uh, going into the void, and for now we're going to have to pay special attention on who tanks that Punisher. It's very scary. Once you get that initiation, but look at look at the follow-up. They're all jumping on ETC. They blow him up in split seconds. The Lee Grey Bay damage just too much, but the Shadow Storm is able to get Tyrande out of there. She will survive the cocoon though, preventing any extra defense here. So uh -oh. the keep is in danger, and they pick oh, up another no. kill. Are they going for more? Yes, they are. The wave of force is just being a huge Good, good drag. Beatles, he's out of Beatles. Good healing. Can they save the dude? And oh. that's on the last second. And the dude stays alive. Punisher Triple leaps stun. in for more. Oh, once again, Tahaka being a bit of a pain. Kenny is delaying his own death. The Twilight Dream trying to turn it around into the Dream. Not it gets to the core. It's taking damage. Haka tries to drag in the Anubrak. Zar is try is getting stunned up by the Anubrak as the core is slowly dropping. Not over yet, Lee Ming still alive. Wolf is at full health and unattended, but the team is starting to drop down. Wolf's in full retreat. Thray chasing down, but they can't chase any further. The Impalers have to be cleared. Yeah, they have to clear this immediately, but that was a good hold by the Czech team. 55%, that is nowhere near uh, being a, a simple core rush for the next time. 55%, that's a respectable amount. And they actually did a good job keeping everyone alive, destroying the damage dealers, killing them very quickly. And yeah. I think it all started with Anubrak being so out of position, dropping so low. And we also had a couple of good mechanical plays on the side of the Czech team. That ice block on Malfrey and the silence that followed right after, beautiful. Even though, even though they were able to drive back home to pick up a couple kills, they're yeah. still oh, yeah. two yeah, yeah, yeah. levels behind because they lost so many members. It was just so early in the mm. game that they had the respawn timers to be able to defend themselves and defend their core in this scenario. This is still far from an easy situation that the Czech Republic find themselves in, that they are very much on the back foot. Yeah, they're not out of the woods just yet. They, they need to have a couple of those team fights if they really <laughs> want to make that comeback happen. Yeah, but, but they only have so many core helps to exactly. sacrifice that kind of team exactly. fight. Where's Max?
Burrow. He's getting chased down, though. He doesn't have adaptation, oh, only yeah. isolation. It gets taken down, mm. and that's yet another kill. We can see the rest of the Czech Republic just going to try and drive away yeah. the members of Poland. There's no way they can take a team fight, but they can at least pretend like they can. And do you see how cheeky that uh, Polish team just played that? They were literally standing next to their opponent's keep, yeah. and they still went ham on that target, which was a Dehaka. It's not an easy target to kill, but they realized, hey, we got level 16. We're playing so well with that burst damage. They even went for a quote-unquote hard-to-kill target. We now see Poland just going to remove the last remaining four, leaving the only structures left for yeah. the Czech Republic being that one remaining keep and the core, and of course the tower and front gate in front of that mid lane. Yeah, exactly. And there's not a whole lot left here for the Czech team. Two keeps destroyed, top and bottom. The side lanes are sometimes the trickiest ones to have this keep disadvantage because it takes you so long to rotate to those lanes uh, at, at, at any given point. So uh, this shrine, they basically can't give it up. The Czech Republic needs to make a stand here. They can't let this Punisher go through, especially since the Arcane one. That's the strongest one too. Uh, okay, never mind. Malfrey is in trouble. Easy. was able to ice block. Twilight Dream Grab four members here. Cocoon's pop. They have Shabby. everyone available. Owls are landing. That's good. As right now, Czech Republic are surviving They're the fight. This. They're sustaining as they do push back Poland. The difference is Poland have a fountain here. Exactly. That's a very good point. I mean, they do have a... Uh, the Czech Republic does have a walking fountain, which is Malfurian, but uh, <laughs> there can only, there's only so much uh, the Druid can do. And uh, now rejuvenated and refreshed, the Malfurian Polish team is making the next... Moshvik is just Lee Ming, but Gugas yeah. survives the Ancestral. Oh, Malfurion is so out of position, not out of position, he was just closed in on by Lee Ming after that Moshpit ended. Deathra finally chased down by Wolves. Thray is zoned out, and the last oh. two members fall as we see Poland moving back across the map. 30 seconds before the next member's alive. Yep. This is going to be a GG, and Poland Despite some signs of life from the Czech Republic, they are going to be able to take this 15 kills to four. Yeah, kudos to the Czech Republic. They fought much more valiantly than in game number one, but in the end, it was not enough to overcome the onslaught from Poland. The Polish Armada with players like Mana, Gugus, and Arzhev, they really didn't disappoint. And this is what we have been expecting from them. Like we said, some of the favorites to win the entire Absolutely. tournament bakery. The Taranda. <laughs> <laughs> so there were definite moments where the Taranda was working out and Czech Republic looked a lot more competitive in this game, I have to say, than the first one. But Poland did look like their tournament favorites. So yeah. they, uh, they performed really well. And again, strong performance. Very yeah. strong performance indeed. And overall, though, like you said, they did look a bit more competitive. Now, do you think that that competitiveness could transfer over to the rest of their group? Do you think there's still a chance of them come, uh, making it through in the top two? I think against a team like the Netherlands, they can maybe catch some ground. Against Spain, it's probably not going to get any easier than against <laughs> Poland. Um, but they can definitely take this game, put it in their books, and gain a little bit of knowledge and experience for it. Because let's face it, most of the Czech players have never played on a level like that. Hero League cannot be compared to a five-man competitive team. So maybe they can use this moment, analyze the replays, that's something I would definitely do if I were them, and then transfer that into the next games. You could not have given me that easier. Analyzing the replays, Bakery, what have you got for us? <laughs> so the first one, we spoke about the Czech damage and their CC and how much potential they have. And we're going to see that here. So a space slides onto Greymane. Now, but Malfurion, look at Malfurion. He tries so hard to get the victory follow up, he gets super out of position, and Mana sees this. The perfect combo threads the needle. Malfurion goes down. Grimmin does die, but that's not going to matter because resets, baby. Oh. He gets one, he gets <laughs> two, here's the third, and then, okay, he's got even more. Um, and they're going to chase them out, and they are going to get the kill. So Mana having a fantastic performance on Li Ming here and definitely making the difference with that fantastic vision onto the Malfurion and seeing him out of position. Yeah, what I want to talk about here real quick is the way the Polish team designed their draft around the map as well. Because, you know, going for blow-ups is fair and square. We see that uh, on almost any battleground. But on Infernal Shrines in particular, you can use the objective, which is the Punisher, as an initiation tool. And you could really see how the Czech Republic struggled. Even when ETC was tanking that slam, they followed up immediately and killed him before the Ancestral could even hit. And we are about to see that, my friend, in oh, the yes. replay, which is the keep dive. <laughs> so as we go forward, we see Tyrande gets a bit out of position. Pasha jumps in, oh. but Slay on ETC sees this. So he gets caught by the leap. And now he sees the Anubo, and he thinks, there's no one in left for Moshpit. This is going to be perfect. It's going to catch three people. 
But Mana, look at the wave of force. Knocks play back. He casts Mosh Pit, okay? So Mana saved the day. But for some reason, Zadun and Sonya are going to walk back into the Mosh even after getting knocked <laughs> out of it. So Mana, he, get, he got the reset. He saves the day again with another wave of force. Kenny, though, does get to follow up with Twilight Dream. Sonya does go down. But wait, the Punisher is still here. And as we're about to see, the Punisher is going to jump on my Fjorin <laughs> because everyone's running away. And here, Poland, again, just like Kenny was mentioning, following up on the Punisher's leap consistently and um, again very impressive play from Poland as a five-man unit but as individuals as well yeah couldn't agree more I think everybody really lived up to the hype that was built around them uh, Arjif we had good support plays here Mana not disappointing I mean this guy was playing at the home story cup for Starcraft 2 a few days ago <laughs> yeah. and already he came <laughs> back practiced hard in Heroes of a Storm and plays two games at the same time on a very very high level Exactly. Absolutely fantastic player. And he did run Li Ming. Now, when we talk about mages on this map, Li Ming, Li Ming works everywhere. We're going to preface this with that. But when you talk about this map, a lot of people seem to prefer Kael'thas or Jaina, for example, due to the fact that or, or you can... Or Chromie, because you're doing damage directly to the objective, whereas the, uh, the Arcane Orb, for example, can only hit the front wave. That had no bearing on this at all, because... I guess if all of your abilities hit the enemy heroes, then it doesn't matter if there are just minions on the objective because that's not your job. Yeah, exactly. And, and if you have heroes like Sonya who clear the skeletons off very quickly anyways, there that means there's more space for those uh, leaming spells to really hit. So I don't think that was an issue, as you said. And it really shows how the, Czech, uh, the Polish team just doesn't necessarily care about the battleground too, too much. They just have their battle plan and they're executing it flawlessly. I was actually quite scared when I saw the Leeming. I would yeah. have preferred something like a Gul'dan, and I thought that the Swine Minions would be a real issue for Mana. But actually, he just showed a fantastic yeah. positioning. Every single Swine, he was stood almost 90 degree angle to where you think he would be, and he was doing a fantastic job of controlling vision. But not just him, his yeah. whole team were controlling the vision of the Czech Republic team that allowed him to stand in these positions. You said it right at the start of your first replay, threading the needle, and he was doing that constantly. However, that is the end of our first series of the day. We do have three more series coming up for you, though, and the next one is going to be a doozy. It is going to be Russia versus Ukraine, and we will be back with that right after this break. Uplifted and empowered by the Titans, Alex Draza is the aspect of life and queen of all dragons on Azeroth. More than any of her kind, Alex Straza is fond of mortals and does everything in her power to protect them, even joining their fight against her fellow aspect, Deathwing. As she soars through the skies of the Nexus, Alex Straza is determined to continue her charge of safeguarding life and shepherding its mortal champions. Alex Straza is a ranged healer who shares her health with allies and can transform into a powerful dragon. Alex Straza's trait, Dragon Queen, allows her to assume her true form as a giant red dragon for a short period of time. As a dragon, Alex Draza has more health and reduces the duration of slows, roots, and stuns used against her. Most importantly, her basic abilities are empowered, and her basic attacks damage enemies and heal allies in an arc in front of her. Gift of Life is Alex Draza's first healing ability. She sacrifices a portion of her current health to heal a target ally. The strength of the heal scales with the amount of health Alex Straza sacrificed. While Dragon Queen is active, Gift of Life is replaced with Breath of Life, which has a shorter cooldown and does not require a sacrifice from her. Abundance provides Alex Straza with a powerful AoE heal. When cast, she marks a target area. A few seconds later, all allied heroes within the area are healed for a percentage of their maximum health. While in dragon form, abundance becomes preservation, which greatly increases the ability's area and the amount it heals. Flame Buffet is Alex Straza's last basic ability. She launches a fire bolt that hits all enemies in its path and burns them for damage over time. If the enemy is already burning, Flame Buffet deals bonus damage, slows them, and refunds its mana cost. 
In dragon form, Alexstrasza uses Wing Buffet instead. With a mighty flap of her wings, Alexstrasza damages, knocks back, and slows enemies in a wide targeted arc. Alexstrasza's first heroic ability is Life Binder. When cast, she creates a link between herself and an allied hero. After a few seconds, both are set to the same percentage of their maximum health based on whoever currently has the higher percentage. Cleansing Flame gives Alexstrasza a versatile heroic option. She takes to the skies in dragon form for a short time and breathes fireballs onto the targeting cursor's position every few seconds. Each fireball damages 